Friends, welcome to my workplace at Ranaghat, West Bengal, India. In this video, I am going to show two cases. The first one is pre intumescent cataract, and the second one is an intumescent cataract. After staining the anterior capsule, as I make a puncture onto the anterior capsule, there is no increase of any fluid from the capsular bag, which indicates that this is not an intumescent cataract this is the pre stage of an intumescent cataract we can call it pre intumescent cataract or non intumescent cataract in such cases we can plan the rexis at on go and it goes smoothly and now see the rest of this surgery the main focus of this video is importance of decreasing the vacuum and flow rate during emulsification of the last piece because in such cases there is no pre there is no epinuclear cushion to protect the posterior capsule so after a bit of hydrodissection which is usually not necessary in such cases the feco needle is introduced into the anterior chamber the machine being used is Oatly Cataract 3. This is not a high-end machine. This is a mid-range machine which most of the ophthalmologists can afford. And now this is spinning of the lens a bit. And now direct chop. The tip of the phaco needle is buried into the substance of the nucleus and the nucleus is chopped. Usually these cataracts are brittle and chopping is not difficult. Such cases are actually easy and the cataract is also not hard most of the time. We can say this is grade 3 nuclear sclerosis and emulsification is going on smoothly ultrasonic energy used is 60 percent flow rate is 45 ml per minute and vacuum is 450 millimeter of mercury at this stage and now from now onwards I have decreased the vacuum to 250 and flow rate is decreased to 25 ultrasonic energy remains the same 60% and a bit slowly the emulsification is carried out the antechamber stability is very good with this vacuum and flow rate and now for the rest of this surgery we can hurry up uh, cortical cleanup is done with the help of a 23G Simco cannula and a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens is implanted in the capsular bag here it is this is enlargement of the main own debit and this is hydro implantation of uh, hydrophilic intraocular lens most of my patients belong to poor category they don't have much financial strength and they can afford only this lens hydrophilic single piece monofocal intraocular lens and now let us see another case you can see some fluid clefts inside the capsular bag and this indicates the cataract is intumescent and there is a grease of some fluid as soon as the intercapsule is punctured so in such cases my strategy always is to do a mini rexis first and then aspirate some cortical lens matter from the anterior aspect of the capsular bag i use a 23g simco canada you can use bimanual irrigation aspiration also for this purpose so the uh, some cortical lens matter is removed and once the capsular bag is thoroughly decompressed in this way the chance of rexis runout is almost eliminated 2% ASPMC is injected again and then a vana scissor is taken 
a cut is made at the margin of the many axis and then the many axis is enlarged to an optimum size axis of about 5.5 millimeter and this can be done very easily without fear of without the fear that the axis will run out to periphery and this is done this is a very nice round axis and now uh, the rest of the surgery goes smoothly my main aim in this video is to show emulsification of the last piece and I want to emphasize what Dr. Saurav D. Badwardhan has suggested that we reduce the vacuum to about 250 during emulsification of the last piece and particularly for those cases where there is no epinuclear cushion like these white cataracts. So this is in direct chaff. The teeth of the FACO needle is buried into the substance of the nucleus. The nucleus is chopped into fragments. Brittle nucleus chops easily, not hard. We can see this is grade 3 nuclear sclerosis. One heminucleus is emulsified. And now we come back to the other heminucleus. We chop this into two pieces. One piece is emulsified and then we come to the last piece. At this time we reduce the vacuum to 250 and flow rate to 25. And slowly and keeping an eye on the movement of the posterior capsule, we can emulsify very safely in this space. And the posterior capsule doesn't move forward and very safely the last piece is emulsified. So we learn a lot of things from our colleagues. S rest of the surgery is hurried up. Cortical cleanup is done very nicely with the help of a 23G Simco and then hydro implantation of a single piece monofocal intraocular lens is done. The wound is enlarged a little bit because I'm in using a B cartridge. This is a hydrophilic acrylic single piece monofocal intraocular lens. As I said, my patients belong to usually poor category and they cannot afford hydrophobic lenses. And the side port is closed. And then this is the final lavage of the anterior chamber. The anterior chamber is formed very nicely. And then we must check the integrity of the wounds before concluding. Few drops of moxie is applied with the ocular surface and the case is concluded. Thank you very much for your attention. Please reduce the vacuum and flow rate for emulsification of the last piece. The ultrasonic energy may remain the same, about 60% or what was earlier, but vacuum and flow rate must be reduced to have a safe surgery, particularly for those cases where there is no epinuclear cushion to protect the posterior capsule. Thanks to Dr. Saurav for the beautiful suggestion.